In this code snippet session, we want to create a timer. So we're going to be using the time function to create a timer. To do that, we must import the time module. And let's go print, quote, start time. So what we want to do is grab the start time. To do that, we're going to create a variable called start time. And we're going to make that equal to time dot time bracket bracket. Now this grabs what's called the epoch time. If we go print and then start time, when we run this program, you will see the epoch time here. So we've got start time and then the epoch time. Now in this epoch time, we can apply mathematical functions to get the day, month, year, etc. The seconds are actually located in just in front of the decimal point here. And we can see that by going start time is equal to start time. And let's add 60 seconds to this. So let's go 60. And then we want to print start time again. When the program runs this time, you'll see that you've got 808 and then 868. So you can see where the 60 seconds is added to the time right here. But if we want to do a timer, we want to be able to run the program and at the end go print, you have finished. And then we want to display, well, what is the time? So let's just change our program a little. So we've got our print start time then we grab the start time. We then print the start time so we can see what time we grabbed it. And then we want to pause the program. Now to pause it, I'm just going to put stopper in and that's just going to be input, quote, press enter to stop. Now after they press the enter to stop, I want to grab the end time. And end time's actually going to be the time dot time again. So we grab the time when the program starts here and display it. We then sit and wait for the user to press enter. When they press enter, we grab the time again. So it looks at the date clock stamp of your CPU and then stores that. And then it says you have finished. And we can now print out the finish time. So we can go print and then we can go end time. So let's have a look at this now. So we run the program one, two, three, you've finished. As you can see here, we started at five and now we're at nine. So it was approximately four seconds it took for me to press enter then. But let's get the computer to work that out for us. So we can see the end time. Let's print, let's put some lines in. So there's a bit of a gap. And then we're gonna work it out. So we're gonna make another variable called duration. And that's going to be equal to end time minus start time. So if we take the end time minus the start time, it should give us the number of section, seconds. And then we can print out duration. So let's run the program now. You can see the start time. I'm just waiting for a little bit. Now I'll press enter. You can see that you finished. It gives us the end time. And then you can see it took five seconds, so six, five, and then milliseconds. If we want to round this up, we could actually int this. So it gives us back the integer and we'll round that for us. And then we just get a single number. So that was about two seconds in the waiting time. So if we create a game that they've got to complete something within a duration, we could then use duration and say, well, if duration is or greater than, say, 60 seconds, then you could go print um, bad luck. You were not fast enough. So let's change this though. Let's make it three seconds. Otherwise, we can go else. Print. Well done. You are very quick. 
So if I take longer than three seconds, it would say bad luck. And if I do it with less than three seconds, it says, well done, you're very quick. So let's run the program now. Let's go one, two, three, four. So it was four seconds, bad luck, you're not fast enough. So let's run it again. One, two, enter. Oh, well done, you're very quick. I've got it on three seconds. So by using the time.time .time to grab the timestamp at the start and then grab the timestamp at the end, we can perform a simple calculation called duration and then we can use that answer to work out well if they're quick enough or slow enough to achieve the outcome of what you required. So I hope you found this tutorial useful in creating this quick little timer. If you did, give the tutorial a like and subscribe to my channel. You also have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful Python snippets.